Well, let's kick off this noon bulletin with some of the discoveries of President Muhammad Buhari over the border closure. The partial closure of Nigeria's land borders seems to be having more benefits than many might have anticipated. Well, the decision has resulted in the reduction of domestic fuel consumption by more than 30 percent. And this is according to President Muhammad Buhari, who insists in a statement that the border closure will save the country billions of naira on import bills. While receiving a delegation of Katsina State Elders Forum at his country home in Dora, President Buhari said he had not given any date for the reopening of the land border. The president admitted that uh, the border communities are experiencing hardship following the ban on sale of fuel at stations which are 20 kilometers to the border. But then he explains that the closure will not have been necessary but for the deep-rooted dishonesty in the country. Now to election matters. The resident electoral commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, across the country are meeting with the chairman of INEC, that's Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and other top officials of the commission today. Well, this will be their first meeting since the conclusion of the Kogi and Bayelsa elections. The commission might be taking up an uh, agenda of, uh, well, to review the last polls and some crucial policy and technical decisions regarding future elections in the country. In a related development, the leadership of Nigeria's main opposition party, that's the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is asking the national, that's the INEC, to lead the process of electoral reforms in the country. At a meeting with officials of INEC in Abuja, the national chairman of PDP, Mr. Uche Sekundu, said it will be difficult for the party to participate in future elections without necessary reforms that will allow for free and fair polls. According to him, the conduct of recent elections, including the 2019 general elections, calls the integrity of the electoral umpire to question. We in PDP expect INEC to be at the forefront of this process, to have legal framework for the conduct of free and fair and credible election. We are not bad from pouring out our minds that the election that took place in Bayasa and Kogi will be the same methods for subsequent elections. It will be very difficult for us to participate. We'll find some of our, your operative unable to detach their interest. Very difficult. The survival and sustenance of our democracy rests squarely on the integrity of the Electoral Commission, which will derived from the character and the impartiality of his operatives. It's very important. I would like to urge your commission to move quickly and initiate electoral act amendments that will legalize electronic voting and remove the influence of the military as primary security on election day. So let's talk about the concerns of the main opposition and what they are asking for. And then we'll, of, of course, weigh in or get the main opposition, the main party, the APC, to also weigh in. So we're being joined on Lunchtime Politics by an APC chieftain, Dr. Sam Jaja. But he's not alone. Also in our Abuja studio, we have Dr. Omar Ardo, a PDP member and a political historian. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. So let me begin with uh, Dr. Uh, Jaja. Now... We understand the PDP is calling for reforms at this point, basically the amendment of the Electoral Act, and a key issue for them is electoral voting. But then your party, that's the APC, responded by saying, well, we think the PDP is actually the party that needs to reform at this point. But that aside, you and I will agree that our elections in the country is not what we want it to be at this point. So the big question for you and your party is, how do you rate conduct of elections in the country? The, are you satisfied with what we have, the status quo? Well, th thank you very much. There is no situation in this world that can satisfy anybody. Uh, for me, every system needs to be improved upon. Um, I can't say that I'm satisfied as a person with um, the electoral process. And I can say also that my, that my party is satisfied with the left right process that's opening for improvement. And we need to deepen our democracy, we need to deepen our electoral process. So we, we are not averse to any call for a reform in a uh, uh, march to improving our democracy. Th that, that's what I have to say about that. 
Right. Now, the reason I ask is, looking at the response from the APC saying it's the PDP that needs to reform, begs the question, uh, so does that mean that political parties don't want to take responsibility for what we see during elections, the violence and what have you? So the big question for you again is, is your party taking responsibility for, you know, some of the actions, the violence we see during elections? Because let's be honest, it's not celestial beings that come down to, you know, perpetuate some of this violence we see. They are actually individuals linked to various parties. So for your party, are you taking responsibility to an extent? We, we cannot take responsibility for the violence. And then, of course, we know our party has been in government for just um, um, four years and uh, getting to the fifth year. And this violence has been there all along. Our party is completely new. Uh, we didn't start it, whatever you call violence, you know, in an electoral system, had been there all along. So we can't just come now and take responsibility as um, being violent in our electoral process. Um, re remember that the issue of accusation of who is violent or who is not violent depends on who wins the election and who doesn't win the election. And um, I don't think that it's even a proper thing to begin to talk about now. <clears throat> For me, the issue is how do we end violence in the electoral process? And not to say how, who initiated what, and who did what. And that would be quite deceptive. And the Nigerians have, have grown that. You know, you, you, you can't be dancing nakedly before the public and, of course, think that you're covered. Everybody knows who does what. Everybody knows who initiated what. Everybody who knows who had been in this process for a long time. So for you now to come and begin to pontificate as if um, the other person is a devil and you are a saint, it's not the proper way to go. Let us all agree that electoral violence is not good for this nation and then we, that it should be seized. And then every party, every political party should work towards ensuring that it ended in a democratic in electoral process. Let's bring in Dr. Omar Ardo now and try to balance this. Now, Dr. Jaja says it depends on which side you belong. If you win, perhaps you will say the election was free and fair. But if you lose, maybe that's when you start calling for reform. So would your party have you know, taken this stance, called for a reform, if it had not lost you know, the series of elections we have seen so far? OK, thank you very much. Uh... PDP had been in power for 16 years, and in those 16 years, uh, the Electoral Act was uh, amended about three times. The last was that of uh, 2011 elections. And in every amendment, there is an intent to improve the electoral system to the point that by 2015, when we conducted election, we uh, conducted a very free, fair, and most credible election in the history of this country. What the APC and President Muhammad Buhari owe this country and owe the Nigeria's democracy and owe to themselves is to improve the process that brought them into power. They were the major beneficiaries, or they are the major beneficiaries of credible election in which an opposition political party was uh, declared winner. They are the major beneficiaries of political sportsmanship in which the incumbent, even before the results uh, uh, completely came in, uh, uh, called in the, uh, the opposition leader and uh, congratulated him, considered defeat. We can't have it better, not even in the United States will you have better than what you know, PDP did. But what did we get at the end of the day? We, there's a garrisoning of election. For example, look at what happened in Baelsa and uh, Kogi. Now, particularly in Baelsa, the entire electoral process was militarized. The GOC of uh, the sixth division, who had serious issues in, uh, in, in the River State election, was uh, played a significant role in the election in Balsa. In fact, he was even said to have moved in and uh, took over the brigade, you know, put the brigade commander aside and then started issuing orders. What interest could a GOC with a headquarters in Rivers could have uh, in an election in Balsa State Doctor, that would warrant him to move Do over to Balsa and displace the You know, the those, are, those are major no, allegations, no, no. This, I like to are, say. These are the key issues. But these are allegations. But you know what? 
I understand that there's, there's a need for parties this, this, to try to stay. If I, if I may just come in for a moment, Dr. Ardo, I understand that okay. you know, political parties will want to say, we're not responsible for this, it's the other party. But let's be honest. Let's be honest right now. These acts of violence and what have you that we see during elections are most times perpetrated by individuals linked to one political party or the other. So same way I asked Dr. Jaja, I would like to ask you, do you think political parties are taking enough responsibilities for the irregularities we see during elections in the country? C certainly not all the political parties take responsibility. Those who win, you know, they win anyhow. And that this violence that takes place in, uh, in, in, in elections, most of them are backed by state agencies, either by the police or by the military. What we want, if we really need election to be free, fair and credible in this country, to be at least back to 2015 election, we need to amend the Electoral Act. It has been submitted to the president. It is the responsibility of the president to, um, to, to sign this Electoral Act, to, at least, that is what he owes Nigerians. That is what he owes our democracy. He is a beneficiary of credible election. The least, the very least that he can do is to sustain credible election and not garrison election. So far, the election has been garrisoned, backed by agencies of state. And whosoever holds state power holds, you know, holds uh, the, the, the machinery for, for, for violence. Don't, don't forget, the managers of violence at the agencies of state. On a final note, uh, Dr. Sam Jaja, this talk about electronic voting, I'd just like to get your opinion in a few seconds. Do you think it's the way forward? Are we ready for electronic voting? Well, I, I, I will say, permit me just to address an issue, I mean, concerning the garrison uh, system uh, my brother talked about here. And I think he was putting it absolutely wrong. In, in 2016, they won election in, in, in Bielsa, and um, uh, that was the garrison. You, you saw what happened in the Kitty State during fire share, where even an army of personnel uh, spoke on the intervention of the military. You saw, that, you saw what happened in River State, an election that was conducted and then uh, uh, put on hold for over two weeks was eventually again announced. I mean, that, that wasn't, I mean, a garrison. That wasn't an ambush of the people's will. You saw uh, that a political uh, party was completely, I mean, bad from taking part in an election um, okay. as a result of the antics of political parties. Okay, so well, Dr. Sam Jaja, I, I was hoping you would respond to the question uh, about now, electronic voting. To what you are talking well, about. well, we'll have to, yes, we'll have to we leave are, it there because of our time. Uh, Dr. Yeah, Sam yeah. Jaja, I apologize the, the, the because we have voting, to close my opinion, my opinion on the conversation the right now. If I may, uh, because of our time, we'll have to close on that conversation. But I'd like to thank you so much. Dr. Sam Jaja is a member of the APC Board of Trustees. He joins us from our Abuja studio, as well as Dr. Omar Ardo, a PDP member and a political historian. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time this afternoon.